Hi, I'm Cecile from Just Another Button Company. We have a new tutorial to show you, something to add to the stitch school. We're going to make felty swirls today. And our favorite material for doing that, Weeks Dye Works, felted wool, hand dyed. We love this product. Okay, from my hand dyed felted wool, that's a fat quarter. I have cut a strip that's two inches wide by about 20 inches long. That is across the width of the fabric. The length of the strip is not magical. If you have a piece of felted wool that's a little bit longer or shorter, you're going to see how it might still work for the project, even if it's not exactly 20 inches. Now, the next step is to fold the wool in half. Pressing is not necessary, but it does make the next step go a little bit easier. I'm folding the wool in half along the length. Okay, now I have a folded strip. This is what we're going for. The felty swirl. And the whole point is using the felty swirl to push into a container it makes a great pin cushion surface just like that. So to make the felty swirl, what you're doing is rolling it like this. But as you can see, it gets a little bit lumpy there as you go because the layers don't stay smooth. So I found that the trick to base the layers together. So I've got a needle and thread here. I doubled my, my thread, put a knot on the end, and I'm sewing along the two cut edges, joining them. I'm going to do this all the way along the length of the strip. I've joined the two layers all the way across, and they're not the end. You can tell my stitching is not going to win any prizes, but it's not going to show, so it doesn't really matter. Ending with a knot and clip my thread. Okay, and you can see right here, I had to start another piece of thread right there because I didn't cut my thread long enough, but that's okay. Because again, that's going to be hidden, and it's not like you're gathering, so it doesn't have to be one continuous piece. But now I want to show you that when you roll, just fold over. I don't think you can do a quarter of an inch because it, you've got too many thick layers there. But if you roll over just under a half an inch and then roll that over again, just make that first roll as short as you can. And then roll it as tightly as you can. And continue keeping the top even. That's what it looks like on the top. That sort of disappears if you keep it small. And you see how the width, the diameter of the swirl is growing as you keep rolling. Remember we started with 20 inches here. Okay, so we started with 20 inches measuring from zero to two here we have just about a two inch circle now so that means if you had a container that was about two inches it would fit into there okay i can see now if i wanted to use this container i probably should start with 25 or 26 inches this is not um, a a perfect pattern as in you know exactly how much you're going to cut to start with might take a little bit of playing, but I can show you here with this one that there's actually more than one strip building this piece to make it a very large swirl. It's not been basted yet, but because there's two pieces, if you look in the center right there, you can tell there's one end and there's another end. Actually, I think there might be three here. 
Okay, so let's see how that goes together. We're still starting with these folded strips. This is really important if you're doing multiple strips to get a nice wide pin cushion. They need to be staggered like that. So start rolling one. Give it a couple of turns and then you can add a second one in. And roll it for a couple of turns. And then you can add in a third one. I like the color variation with this hand dyed wool. There's several shades of blue going on there. This could be rolled a little bit tighter. Just to show you what we're doing here. Okay, see how much larger that one turned out because we are doing three strips. And if you're worried about seeing the end there, when you're all finished, you actually can tuck those little ends down inside there and they just disappear into the wool. It's a very forgiving technique. Now, once I have that made, I like to drop it in. Okay, now I don't want that to go all the way down like that. So here's what I'm gonna do. Once I get it out, I take some fiber fill, some polyester fiber fill, and put that in there. I can sit that right on top. And in theory, my pin cushion could be done right then. Right now I have it just pinned in place while I'm trying to decide if it's the right size. But for this one, I'm gonna finish this up a little bit more. I'm actually going to sew some more stitches on the bottom here. Get my thread anchored so it doesn't pull through. Now, if I sew through to the center, like that, just catching maybe the bottom, you know, eighth or a quarter of an inch, and then go back to the center again sort of sewing spokes, just holding all those layers together so that they don't unwind. Again, this is not supposed to be prize winning stitching, it's just functional. And when you're making your own felty swirl, you're going to want to use thread that matches the wool. And those stitches just disappear. <clears throat> but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here because I've used the aqua on the green for the, for the purposes of this tutorial. All right, so I came out next to the fold here and I'm going to give it a little bit of stitching here too. You can mostly hide your stitches on the inside. Okay, tie it down. Doing it really fast. I know you'll want to do it neater when you're making a pincushion for yourself or a friend. Okay, look how sturdy that is now. It's not going to come open. You can use this for a functional pincushion. If you like, you can give it depth by pushing up on the bottom of it like that too. So it has a little dome shape then. almost the right size for this. I think if I was really going to put it in there before I stitched it down, I would make another strip and add it inside there. Okay. And I wanted to show you that this green is especially effective inside a flower pot. Looks like a little bit of moss growing down there. We had the blue in the bucket. Looks like a pail full of water. And one year for Christmas, we took a mug and filled the mug with the fiber fill and put a brown swirl on top of it for cocoa and then put pins in there. That was very cool. Now, there's one little trick that I wanted to show you too. You can put the swirl inside a glass container. But if you do that, you can see 
some of your um, running stitches there where you've joined the two layers. If you know you want to use a glass container, you might want to do what I did with this piece right here. I've actually used just an overcast stitch. Now this one is two inches wide. It's already folded in half, but the piece, I should probably clear some of the stuff off here. Okay. My strip is two inches wide, and it's about 10, it's about 15 inches long. And if I roll it up, I'm not seeing any of those stitches right there. This is so quick to do. Almost an instant pin cushion. Okay. So we had this piece right here, where 20 inches made a two inch pin cushion. This one is 25 inches. And the pincushion is just almost two and a half inches. So now if I was to put this down inside here, you can't see the running stitches at all. You can attach it to the bottom with a little dab of glue if you want. If you want it to stay in there, it might make it easier to uh, pull your pins out without pulling the pincushion up. But my last step, I always like to take my scissors and just tuck that in down and tuck that in down right there. Okay, there we have it. Felty Swirl Pin Cushion. Thanks for joining us at Just Another Button Company.